Sorry about that. Alarm's going off as I start. Sharon Horn Elstrom here. Welcome to day 757 as I'm pouring myself some more coffee. Of uh, what she up to now. She, Sharon Horn Elstrom. I know, not the best name on the planet, but 757 days ago, I needed and I decided that I was going to start documenting my journey. Documenting my journey as I transitioned from the brick and mortar world and the corporate world to the online world. And uh, I'm... I go back and forth whether I want to um, do both. I, I was always, for 25 plus years, I worked in corporate America and had businesses on the side. And then I made the leap totally into having my own businesses. Uh, and a few years ago, I had the opportunity to say, all right, I'm, I don't have to do this anymore. What would I love to do? I'd always been curious about the internet. I'd been dabbling, not doing anything, but just learning and studying and dabbling and curious and following different people on the internet for, geez, at least a, a, probably since the internet started, right? I remember staying up all night being fascinated when I first got access to the internet. I had to go to work the next day and I had two little kids and I'm like, oh my God, what am I thinking? Staying up all night. And for the next day I was exhausted, but that's how intrigued I was by this whole internet thing and access to information. I've always loved learning. So to me, it was like a whole new world opened up for me. And so when I had the opportunity to say, okay, I wanna do something online, I thought I'm gonna do something online. And here I am 757 days later, still not done. Here's the secret. We never get done. We never get done with our lives. No matter what we want, what we achieve, we're always going to want something more. It's, it's inherent in our humanity to strive for and continue to grow and want more out of life. Uh, I don't know. I, I think a lot of us think we don't deserve more, but we all want more. We all want more love, more freedom, more time, more energy, more everything. So today... I got up early. I don't know why, but I was up. I, was, I guess I'm excited about some stuff that's going on with um, projects I'm working on. And so I woke up early and sometimes I'll lay in bed and think and meditate. But today I was like, I can lay here for another hour or I can just get up. So I got up, I did some laundry, did some dishes, um, you know, stuff that doesn't even matter. Made some coffee because I always make coffee and um, took some notes because I'm learning that when I have an idea, what I need to do is write it down. If I don't write it down, it gets lost. Um, so I write things down. Um, today's discussion for Supersize Your Business and for my Facebook Live was about taking a shine to something, taking a shine to you, fancying something, um, being attracted to something. And so I switched that to, well, how do you get people to take a shine to you? What are three to five things that you can do right now for free to encourage people to take a shine to you? To be more likable, right? It's pretty easy to be more likable. Number one, be, be kind, put off the type energy to attract the type of people you want to attract. If you wanna attract grumpy, curmudgeon-y, um, negative, victim, pessimistic people, put off that vibe. If you wanna attract positive, growing, fun to be around people, Put off that vibe, be that person too. If you wanna to attract kind people, be kind to people. People are attracted to like individuals. People like and want to be around people that are like them. So if you wanna be around a bunch of gossipy, snobby people, egotistical um, status seekers, go after it and behave that way. Put on those um, behaviors. If you wanna go after, um, I don't know, more down to earth, nature loving, um, activists, whatever type of people you want to be around, be like that, be that person. The real trick is, my bonus trick for that was, just be yourself. And guess what? The people that you're supposed to be around will be attracted to you. The people that you're not supposed to be around will be repelled by you. And it just doesn't matter. Some people will love you, some people will hate you. It, people, it doesn't matter, right? Uh, my friend Jim Edwards always says, um, love me, hate me, um, but there's no money in the middle. So he was always going for people to either love him or just reject him and hate him right off the bat, which is part of what I do with Pajama Gram. I have to guess credit credit Jim Edwards with, with that. Um, and, it, you know, it's really funny because the people that hate Pajama Gram the most are actually in my immediate family. They, they are embarrassed for me because they're like, why would you show up on video in your pajamas? And as much as I try to explain it to them, 
they don't get it but then they don't even understand what I do every day so it doesn't matter right there's some people we just love because we love them and you know our families tend to be like that and we just we don't expect them to be different than they are one of the biggest lessons I've learned about frustration and I spent lots of years be feeling frustrated and it was that I was frustrated not because of the way things are but because I was judging the way things are and the way things are at a given moment the way things are are just the way they are it just is the result I'm getting in any area of my life right now is just the way it is and it's actually the consequences of past decisions thoughts feelings behaviors and beliefs that I've had right and it just it's it all culminates to what I'm experiencing right this very instant but at any given moment in time any given instant I have the ability to to look at that and say yep that is what is but that's not what has to be forever that's not what my future has to look like so if my coffee's cold I can drink cold coffee or I can go upstairs and I can microwave it I'm not gonna get mad and frustrated because my coffee's cold right now I'm just gonna say my coffee's cold so it is what it is now I can stop and say what am I gonna do about it instead of being frustrated about it instead of being frustrated because there's traffic I can say oh yep there's lots of traffic today so what am I gonna do about it tomorrow I can be frustrated right now and have a terrible day because there's traffic or I can say yep there's lots of traffic today go with the flow and then say well what can I do differently what can I actually do differently because we can only ever actually affect our own thinking our own feelings our own beliefs and our own actions right the only person we can ever control in the entire universe really really control is ourselves right I can try to make our kids happy we can try to make our significant others happy we can try to make our employees happy we can try to motivate people I learned this in uh, corporate America when I was going to college I was working for 3m at a pilot plant and that is where I learned real life stuff I was learning in college um, applied to a real working environment and I learned that human behavior is very interesting motivation comes from within and that everybody has a different level of work ethic and desire to support than he has it's a different level of being a self-starter not different people need different amounts of instruction and management in order to perform jobs in a certain way I learned a whole lot I learned so much one of the best things I ever did was working every summer at really big corporations um, to apply the things that I was learning in college and I think that's a lesson that I learned but I didn't always do as I was learning and growing and, and, and going through different trainings especially when I made the leap from the offline to the online world for some reason I applied some things but I didn't apply as many things as I did in the offline and even in the offline world I took a lot of advanced training and a lot of coaching and a lot of um, webinar not they didn't have webinars back there but seminars and events and um, types all types of business and leadership trainings um, actually I, I gotta dig out my I've got a whole tub of certificates from that it's really interesting because I look at my profiles and I know that I need to update and fix my social profiles but a lot of them ask for like education and additional education and certifications and things and I have a whole tub of them and there's so many that I don't even remember them anymore there used to be um, and there may be still be but I took them a, a lot of them or all of them I was interested in these seminar circuits that went around and, and I think they're probably mostly online now but they used to be actual physical events and trainings that you would go to half day one day two day trainings on specific topics you know how to handle difficult people communication skills for women leadership skills for women all kinds of things like that uh, so I've actually lost track of all the things I've done like that but you're supposed to write them all down so people can be attracted to you so they can take a shine to you because they know that you've um, had experiences that are similar to theirs so talk about you know the five main ways that you can easily and effortlessly and for free have people liking you and I guess as long as I'm talking about it be kind be positive be thankful be the type of person that you want to attract um, be fun to be around be positive be the person that likes the room when you come in it not the one that likes the room when you leave be interested and curious ask questions about other people be curious about them really be interested in other people 
it's more important to be interested than to be interesting. Uh, listen, two ears, one mouth for a reason, right? Uh, be present with people. When you're talking to someone, when you're with someone, be with them. Don't be looking at your phone all the time. Don't be looking away. Don't be looking at your watch. Don't be trying to make your escape as quickly as possible because guess what people sense and know that we all sense and know that and then i mean i will catch myself doing that sometimes when i'm talking to somebody and i know i need to be somewhere else i'll catch myself and i'm like and then i stop and i have to consciously bring myself back to the present moment and the present person in the situation it's human nature but we can we can fight that right um add value to other people any way shape or form that you can add value and help other people help them People love people that are like them. People love people that make them feel a certain way, usually make them feel good, at least good about themselves, and add value to them. If you can add value or help somebody solve a problem or answer a question, why would you not do it, right? Does it take anything away from you to add value to somebody else, to add value to the world? The answer is no. In case you're wondering, the answer is no, it doesn't. It just makes the whole world a better place. And then finally, my biggest piece of advice when it comes to having people take a shine to you is just be yourself. Be who you really authentically, uniquely are. And guess what? Some people will love you. Some people will hate you. And it just doesn't matter, right? It's, you know, the old sales training that says you just go for no's and you ask a ton of people knowing that the vast majority of people are going to say no. I hate to break it to you. The vast majority of the people on this planet are not going to take a shine to you. They're not going to love you. But guess what? You don't need everybody to. You just want a few people to take a shine to you and love you, right? We don't need everybody to be attracted to our business. We just want the people that we want to serve and give value to and that we like, that are like us, that we want to attract to our business, to take a shine to us. So I like this. I really like this expression, take a shine to. And you know what? I don't know that I've ever actually said I'm, I take a shine to this or that. I do love shiny things. A lot of people love shiny object syndrome, right? We get distracted by every shiny new thing that comes our way. And I didn't used to think I was that way because I'm not a new thing person. I've got a sister who has to be ahead of the game. You know, she's an early adopter and she has the newest, greatest, latest everything. Um, I've never been that way. I've always been, I'll hear about something, I'll, I'll think about it, and then I'll, I'll try it out. But I do like, we all like shiny new things, right? We all like new, different things things, especially if they're going to benefit us in our lives in some way, shape, or form. <coughs> uh, so thinking about that, day five, woohoo, day five already of my no sugar challenge. Um, yesterday, I did pretty well. It wasn't that bad. I've actually made a, um, a chicken soup uh, from scratch with um, ha homemade, handmade uh, chicken dumplings, Dump not chicken dumplings, um, egg drop dumplings, egg dumplings. So no sugar in that. I actually ate that twice yesterday just to keep it simple and easy and I didn't feel like going out to the store to get a salad so that's what I did um, also today that was so day five today of the no sugar challenge and I will wrap that up on the thrive challenge page after this I forgot and I, I'd like to do my videos in the same order every day so I usually do um, I do one fun thing every day my 365 day fun challenge then I do my Facebook Live on my personal page just talking about whatever the idiom is for the day. It gets me a chance to practice and think about the things I want to say for my Super Size Your Business page, where in my Super Size Your Business group, where I share, okay, what does this idiom mean to helping you grow and build a business that you want? And it's really been fun and challenging to just take these idioms that don't really necessarily have anything to do with business or running a business and say, okay, well, I, here's this idiom, here's what it means, here's where it came from. How can you use that to grow and build the business that you want, the business of your dreams, to supersize your business? Um, and then uh, today is day three of, the, I call it the 16 fast challenge, where I am doing the, the program people have out there and I'm, making, I'm doing my own version of it, where you eat only in an eight hour window during the day and then the other 16 hours of the day you fast you don't eat anything so after eight i'm not eating anything and then before noon the next day i'm not eating anything so from eight to noon that's my fasting period and then from noon to eight which is my daughter's prime hours by the way i just thought of that now uh, 
I eat within that window and outside that window I just I don't I can drink coffee you can drink water and drink tea you can drink things and I don't know what the rules are I, I so as I could research and look it up but sometimes I just do my own thing right because we have to each do what works for us so I just wing it wing it I just wing it and do my own thing just kind of how I do lots of things right so I'll, I'll do that after this working on the live challenge workshop um, worked on the workbook yesterday and you know the uh, things and I'm actually in the massive paring down position because unlike a lot of people they have to find ways to fill up their time I got to find ways to shut up and not share everything including the kitchen sink I have to just back off and say okay what are the three or four main points I'm gonna make for this day and then I have to repeat myself I'm not I don't love repeating myself but I will it's for the purpose of people's understanding right and getting it so three or four main things for each day and that's all I get I can't talk about more than that I don't get to I'll have to save it for the program <laughs> but it's it's hard for me because I want to tell everybody everything right we want to share everything with everybody and guess what that sounds awesome in theory but I've done it for a couple of years and it doesn't work uh, every one of my online uh, programs have had way too much stuff in them. Every webinar I've done, way too much stuff. And it overwhelms people. And when people are overwhelmed, what do they say? A confused mind says no. An overwhelmed mind says hell no and runs to the exit, right? Pushes that button and, and goes to a different page or pushes that button or walks out the door, whatever. Have you ever walked into a store? And this is how, actually, this is exactly how I feel about antique shopping and antiques. My my mom and her friends, they love antiques shopping. My mom's always loved antiques. Me, on the other hand, I walk into an antique store and there's so much stuff and so much chaos and so much history. I find it absolutely overstimulating and overwhelming and therefore, I don't like it. I don't like that feeling of being overwhelmed and just too much stuff in your face. It's like the shops where there's so much stuff everywhere you look, it's just too much. It's overwhelming. And some people thrive on that some people love that <clears throat> and I am just the opposite which is probably why I don't like shopping I am one of those rare people that I hate shopping don't tell don't tell anyone my daughter still has almost not forgiven me for the lack of shopping I've done with her I always sent her with my sisters <laughs> and I do the same thing with my granddaughter I'm like can can you just take her shopping and luckily her dad likes to shop so she doesn't need to do that with me so working on that that's it that's all I've got today I am I'm I set a little bit of a goal of not sure I'm gonna commit to it yet or not of at least I want I've already got it outlined maybe putting the meat in my book maybe actually getting the rough draft done and sent to somebody that can edit it for me um, knock wood I do need to find somebody that can edit things for me, especially with my visual challenges. I used to always be able to do all that stuff myself. Guess what? I can't do and don't choose to struggle with doing some of those things myself anymore. So I will write the crux of it and then I need somebody to actually edit and review it and clean it up and clean up the graphics and things for me because drawing graphics, not my thing. I love them. I know what I like, but I am not that good at creating them or recreating them getting much better at focusing on what I am good at it and then sharing the load with people that are it's their genius zone to do graphics it's their genius zone to do you know photography it's their genius zone to design things because it's not mine uh, that's it that's all I've got today if I can help you in any way ask in the comments below I will say forever ask you'll never die by asking a question uh, unless you're in a gangster movie or something so ask and make your life a lot simpler and easier. I'll, of course, be with you tomorrow. Bye.